Hi everyone, Empress Justice here and welcome to the November 2023 reading. Now, what a month October was. We had two eclipses, both solar and lunar. And it was like the energy was absolutely crazy. Not only did we have an all systems go mentality in October where everybody was working hard, everybody was putting their public face forward and making their public's role, public roles known in the world. Not only was that happening, but because it was happening during a literal eclipse month, we had to deal with inverted fortunes as well. So there are many of us who found when we did the same things in the same ways, they didn't work out so well for us. But when we turned around and met those inversions as opportunities rather than as obstacles, when we did that, we found that our fortunes worked in our favor and we learned a very valuable lesson in October. That lesson being that you can do the same things, but doing them in the same way isn't really going to get you anywhere. The key to consistency, quiet as it's kept, is adaptability. And with every eclipse, that's the lesson we learn, but we especially learned that in October, having no less than two eclipses in it. But what about November? Now, with November, coming into November, which took place yesterday, uh, we had a Mrigashira moon in Taurus and we had a Swati sun and ascendant, okay? So coming into this month, uh, we were kind of looking at the spoils of our work. Now we kind of allow karma and spirit to do its thing in terms of bringing us the rewards that might have come as a result of us taking those inversions as opportunities or conversely doing the same thing in the same way and not getting anywhere so whatever it is that we did in october in particular but in this year in general november is the month where we see the spoils of our work so to speak and with Mrigashira and swati um, bringing in November what we find is that October just like I said in the lunar eclipse reading we may find that October has us taking a big leap but November is where we make a relatively soft landing especially coming into November there's going to be a lot of um there's going to be a lot of expanding outwards, but the expansion outwards will be soft. It's not going to be invasive. If we have new business business interests, if we want to move home, if we want to travel, we're already putting these plans in place, but we're doing it in very, very subtle ways. So we may experience expansion but it's going to be in a way that's gentle and it's going to be in a way that is relatively non-invasive it's going to be very very subtle i did talk about this during the uh pisces rahu and virgo key to reading go check that out but yeah for this month it feels like we've we've made a soft landing and we're expanding outwards but we're doing it softly and slowly which means of course that we're guaranteed to have longer lasting and more powerful results in the end. Now, when November ends, it's going to be ending on a Punavasu moon in Gemini with a Rohini ascendant and an Anuradha sun. Now, we've got Jupiter dominant, moon dominant and Saturn dominant. Now, what does all this mean? Again, we're talking about receptive energy. Punavasu is very keen to seek out new experiences and basically seek it out through engaging with the lighter side of life, engaging with sort of um, seemingly shallow enterprises. So Purnavasu seeks the new, seeks the different, whereas Purnavasu Cancer is more likely to revitalize what's dead. But with Purnavasu Gemini, they're more likely to seek out what's new and what's different. But again, it's a non-invasive, non-confrontational, it's a gentle desire to explore the counterculture without offending the status quo, that type of thing. It's that type of feeling that we exit November with. So we've got Purnavasu at the end of at the end of the month, Purnavasu moon at the end of the month, and then we've got Swati Ascendant. 
at the beginning of the month when you put those things together it's about discovering the secrets of the hidden worlds but again doing it in a way that actually ties in with our own roles within the status quo it's not separate from the status quo what we do is is that we go deeper into the status quo in order to find the hidden worlds beneath it so that we can actually utilize what we learn from those spaces and incorporate those lessons into our lives. And on top of that, we take those lessons that we learn and we use it to expand our worlds outwards. But once again, throughout November, it's going to be in a gentle, subtle and non-invasive way. So we do rebel. We do have this month of non-conformity. We do have this month of gaining wealth, gaining abundance, but because of where the moons, the ascendants and the suns are placed, it's gonna be in a subtle and non-invasive way where other people might not see it coming. Now, we're still talking about the end of the month because I just brought up Punavasu in Gemini as the moon. With Rohini ascendant, it's supposedly a sort of receptive vampiric energy. It draws energy in, which is understandable because it's Taurus we're dealing with and Taurus is Earth. Earth sucks in water, sucks in everything, right? So really, at this point, we're soaking up everything, all the results of our work over the last year and in particular in October, we're soaking it all up towards the end of the month and we're holding it to see what we can get out of it, to see what we can, to see what gifts we can release in December and in 2024. With Anurada, Anurada is Saturn dominant. So everything that we receive, everything that we hold tight, Anurada wants to go even further. So basically, we've got Mrigashira that wants to expand outwards, right? And then we've got Swati who wants to expand outwards even more through the mind. And then we've got, and that's, that's at the beginning of the month. And then towards the end of the month, we've got Purnavasu who wants to go deeper into the status quo rather than away from it. And then you've got Rohini who appreciates the lessons that they have been given. But here comes Anurada who wants to go even deeper still and find valuable lessons within what Purnavasu was originally looking for. So there's a really, really interesting development in November in taking all the spoils that we've been given and going even deeper into those spoils in order to find out what we can use and taking those precious resources and placing them outwards so that we can actually take those qualities towards their full potential. And I know it doesn't make sense now, but it will if you watch this back. So in other words, in November, it's soft and deep. There's softness and there's depth. November 2023 is more than an, it's more than an aftermath. This is more than a month of gaining the results of what we've done in the past. It's also actually looking deeper into what we receive for our work. It's looking deeper into it. Finding the most precious elements within those things. And then wearing those things outwards in order to discover their full potential so it's not just about what we receive it's about it's about the potential of what we how do i put this it's not about what we we receive it's not just about that it's about the potential of what's inside the gifts that we've been given the potential the true potential of the gifts that we have been given how do we truly make the most out of them? That is gonna be one fundamental question in November that by the end of the month, most likely will be answered at that time, okay? So November is about finding the hidden qualities or the hidden potential in all of the results of our work. But, there's also other stuff to consider during November and I'm gonna get into that now when I get into the recap. So for the recap, um, there's also the theme of guilt that I wanna go, go through. 
there are two types of guilt that will be observed by all of us in November. The first is survivor's guilt and the second is traditional guilt. The people that are suffering from survivor's guilt are the ones who have made the most of, you know, the differing situations during the eclipse. You've made the most of it. You've learned the lessons that you needed to learn during the eclipse about adapting within your routine. You've learned those lessons. And now when it comes to November, you've actually reaped the rewards of everything that you've learned. And because you've reaped the rewards of everything that you've learned, you might incur wrath from some people. You might gain anger from some people as a result of what you've done or as a result of what you've accomplished. Um, this is natural. It's natural. If you're an empathic kind of person and you're experiencing what it's like to be focused and to put your empathy on the back burner, if you're like just experiencing what this is like, whilst your guilt is not necessarily constructive, it is actually natural and it's understandable. First of all, you're having to fight through the gaslighting of everything that you've been taught in your past. The second thing is, is that you're also fighting with your own empathy because you know what it's like. For those who have been successful, you know what it's like to have people turn their backs on you. Um, you know, you know what it's like to have people turn their backs on you and to have like people only focused on their own goals when you most needed help. You know what it's like, you've been there. So those of you suffering with survivor's guilt, now you're the one who's who's got their eyes on the prize. Now you're the one who's doing what you're supposed to be doing. Whilst other people around you seem to be languishing, falling behind or, you know, not stepping up to the plate. And you feel bad because you know some of the people that you're leaving behind, if not most of them, are actually good people. And you don't want to leave them behind. But in order for you to realize your ambitions and realize your goals, you do have to move forward. You do have to focus on what you love. Let that drive you and let that maintain your focus. You cannot be sidetracked by other people's problems right now. Right now, if you belong to the first group that has survivor's guilt, you have to understand that this is really about you. This really is about you. You cannot um, you're not going to be able to help anyone anyway if you can't help yourself. That's just the way it is. Okay. Now, there is the second group in November suffering with traditional guilt from wrongdoing. Um, not all of the people within this second group are going to be guilty. With some of you, it's just shame, really. Um, but the people in the second group... Um, some of you are holding on to spite, others of you are holding on to self-flagellation. So either you're taking the pain outward or you're taking the pain inward. Um, because you are too scared to admit to yourself how far things have gone and how far you might have taken it. You're, you're scared to kind of admit that. And because you're scared to admit that, um... You know, if you can't even admit how toxic things have truly been, then you're not going to admit that you actually want change either. So there's this layer of self-awareness that you kind of have to move through if you belong to the second group. There's this level of self-awareness that you have to move through. Um, it's better to kind of let yourself lose and let it hurt for losing than continuing to be toxic. Like... If you feel like you've lost a good reputation or you feel like you've lost the person that you love or you feel like you've lost something important as a result of your own actions, all you can do is let that go. That's all you can do. And all you can do is make the decision from here on in to be a better person and that's all you can do. But this in particular is about the group of people that in October um, tried to engage in spiteful behavior and found that it didn't work out so well. Now you're having to deal with the loss. But again, 
some people are dealing with that loss by being even more spiteful and then there are certain people who are dealing with that loss by with despondence and neither of those things are helpful to anybody do you understand what I mean now I'm going to suggest something to those with survival guilt or survivor's guilt and those with traditional guilt there are there are three things that I have to get across to both groups here the first thing is, is that you cannot hold, hold yourselves hostage with self-punishment. You cannot hold yourselves hostage with self-punishment uh, self because if you do that, you're not helping anybody. The whole point of living on this realm, it's supposed to be a university. It was never supposed to be a prison. You were only ever supposed to learn. But because we overreact to one another's slights, we turn it into a prison and we turn it into, you know, we turn it into a dangerous place to live like this realm right here. We turn it into a dangerous place to live because we overreact to things. But you cannot hold yourself hostage. You can't hold yourself hostage um, because if there are any punishments to be had, you're not gonna escape them anyway. I've learned this in my life. If spirit is going to punish you, they're going to do it. It doesn't matter what you do and it doesn't matter what you say. It's, it's a non-negotiable thing. You get out what you put in. So you might as well put the self-punishment aside. Put it aside. Okay? Second thing is, is that love must be your focus. And it must be the only thing that matters to you now. And I'm not just talking about love with people. I'm talking about loving what you feel, to what you love to feel. It's, it's about what you love to feel. I was going to say loving what you feel to love. But like I was wrapping myself up a little bit in words salad there. But it's basically about loving what you do. And embracing the feelings that you love to feel making love a part of your destiny that has to be your focus that has to be where you find your center do you understand what i mean it has to be where you find peace because not only will you heal yourself by doing that you will also heal people indirectly through you making yourself happy and filling your own cup and thus being a pleasant person to be around. You know, you, you, you'll you help people indirectly, but you'll also help people directly as well because you will inspire other people to follow on that same, to follow on from that same thing. And also you dedicating your life to what you love to feel and what you love to do, it's liable to make you more generous. Again, I speak from experience. So it doesn't matter whether you suffer with survival guilt or suffer with traditional guilt. Love must be the focus. Love definitely must be the focus. I don't care who you are or what you've done. Love has to be your focus now. It has to be all that matters to you now. Especially considering the rewards or the gifts or the karma that all of us have come in. We don't have a choice in a matter. We put in something, we're going to get something back. Leave it in spirit's hands. That's all we can do and focus on what we love. Okay. Now I've got other important notes here. So for November, November is quite a soft month in terms of you know, there will be a lot of the powerful events happening, but they'll be happening passively. But just because there is passivity, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that there's a lack of importance because there are deep and meaningful, tangible events coming for all of us. And then on top of that, this is a month where we're going to experience real self-expression and real creativity, especially on a surface level. You've got passion, we've got intuition, and destined events and situations coming up. There's going to be heavy emphasis on destiny, on fulfillment, talent, power, and wealth. Um, and there's also going to be 
quite a bit of success and quite a bit of generosity, like I said before. So, yeah, that there are those to think about, but also there are additional notes that I've got that I'd like to read for you now. We've got intellectual compatibility in love, strong-minded, passionate masculinity or masculine energy, relationship expertise, spending more time with loved ones, draining gossip and conflict, self-confidence and self-worth through study, examining karma, seeking a better friendship circle and better environment. That's what a lot of us are going to be inclined to do and we're going to find it, which is great. Thinking, worrying about karma from the past, strong leader, earning a wage, cruelty, entertainment industry, manuscript, generous community, gifts, creating jobs, wanting more than what you're getting. We got to watch out for that in November because again, what we receive in November is as a result of the work we've put in throughout the entire year, but especially in October because the eclipse month, eclipse month was a very powerful month for manifestation. So whatever it is that we did in October and whatever it was that we manifested is going to come to pass now. Hold tight. And if you find yourself being ungrateful for what you're getting, once again, the Anurada sun at the end of November is going to be doing that work of looking for the, the, the Galena within the lead. Okay. It's going to be doing that work. All right. So eager to help overly helpful social work counseling healing and natural therapy so like i said this is a soft month this is a relatively soft month but don't get to thinking that powerful events won't take place because they will and they're especially going to take place in our public lives in our careers and in our love lives too so there's a lot going on in november it's an aftermath of October's incredibly powerful, intense and focused energy. It's an aftermath of that, but it doesn't mean that this month is without its powerful situations. There are so many powerful situations in November. It's just that it's not gonna be as aggressive. Do you understand what I mean? So with that in mind, I've got to get to the 12 signs and I'm going to start with Taurus. This is for Kritika, Rohini and Mrigashira. How are you doing, Taurus? Let me get a sip of water. So the cards we have for you are the Seven of Wands, the Hierophant, And transits now my bad I didn't prepare for this one I've got to get this out for uh, for its meaning and definition so before I get into everything I've got to read from this first okay so it's the star codes astro oracle and it's number 55 I want to read from okay All right. The planets are always moving through time and space, always spinning around us. When those planets form geometric relationships to one another, they create transits, the astrological weather conditions of the day that affect us all. When a moving planet forms a geometric relationship to a planet in your natal chart, that trans transiting planet can act like a guest who enters your house, sits in your kitchen or sprawls in your living room. It activates that part of your existence. If that transiting planet talks to your Mars, it activates your warrior nature and flight or flight response, fight or flight. If it talks to your moon, it initiates a story centered around your home, your family and how you nurture yourself. So long story short, Taurus, is that right now of this moment, you are in a situation that's in flux. You're in a situation that is kind of up in the air right now. Now, when it comes to the focus of where your mind should be at for November, it should be in your first house. 
it should be with you and where your priorities lie. It should be with you, your physical health, your personal image, how you see yourself, the strength of your body. These are the things that should take priority for this month in general, okay? But here's the thing, as you ascend in your personal growth, as you ascend, you find that love with other people becomes more important. Love, you find love is more important. It's not that you're not living independently in the way that you're supposed to because you are. It's just that love is becoming stronger in your life. Now that could be, it could be that as single Taurians, you're in love with someone and you know, you're in love with somebody that you know has long-term potential. You see, that's the one thing that Taurians are good at. They're, they're good at falling in love with people with long-term potential um, for themselves anyway. So it might be that you're single and you're falling in love with a person or a passion of yours that has long-term potential or you could already be doing what you love or being with somebody that you love and deciding that you want to commit to them. And I feel like if you're really honest with yourself, even though the love in your life is thick right now, it's thick, there's so much love in your life going on. I feel like even though the love in your life is thick, you could be using that as an anchor because things, everything else around you is so chaotic right now. You're doing well in your career, but it's like there are so many different phases that your career is moving through. You are doing well and your career is doing well, but it's like things seem to be moving too fast, almost too fast for you to keep up with. And it's kind of, that there's a feeling of you spinning out of your control. Things are good, but it's like they're spinning out of your control. So in order to look for a fixed point that can keep you centered and not leave you dizzy, you're looking to the love in your life. And again, you have a talent for looking for long-term partners. That's something that Taurians are very talented at. Okay. But your focus needs to be on yourselves right now. If you are doing well in your career, but you find things are spinning out of control, it might be time to take a couple of days off or maybe spend more time by yourself kind of reprioritizing or recalculating exactly what needs to take. Well, that is reprioritizing. It might be a time to reprioritize different areas of your life and see what goes where. Do you understand what I mean? It might be time to come back to the drawing board and see what you need to prioritize in order for yourself to be healthy and in order for your body to be where it needs to be, in order for your personal image to be where it needs to be. It might be time for you to come back to the drawing board and realign. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, it might be you coming back to yourself rather than coming back to love that you need to focus on because you are elevating, you are leveling up Taurus in a big way, right? But you need to focus on you right now. Your loved ones will definitely understand that they're definitely gonna get it. But before I get into all of that, I've got to read your notes, okay? Shout out to Taro Ingi. Um, I've been reading her, I've been learning from her about tarot readings for years. I've been learning her meanings for years. So shout out to her. Um, I love her work. Um, it, yeah, it just needs to be said. I'm a tarot ingy girl all the way. <laughs> so shout out to her for this, okay? So for the notes, we've got defending a community, star spiritual leader, motivational teacher, too much politics, schools and institutions, churches within churches, sub-religions, choosing to abandon the situation, transference of knowledge, lecturing online, progress in politics, leadership and management, multiple projects, losing oneself in work, escaping in work, love conquers all and victory in love. Okay, so yeah, 
there are a lot of good things happening in your life what I see for you is that there is a towering figure like they're quite big and quite tall right and I see you looking up to them and I see that they seem quite intimidating to you but you want to actually learn from them anyway so regardless of whether or not you see them as bigger and taller than you you're brave enough to sort of say listen I want to learn from you as much as I can but you're also respectful enough to listen to people who know more than you you're also respectful enough to sit there and be like okay let's hear what this person has to say because you don't have an ego when it comes to that so there is, there is going to be somebody that you're going to be learning from. They're going to be a towering influence in your life. And you are going to sit there and you're going to listen and you're going to pay attention because that's what you do best. You're very observant. Okay. Now, when it comes to love, I see that many of you want to commit. Uh, I think I might have brought this up earlier in your reading, but you want to commit to someone. There's someone or something that you want to commit to. And ordinarily, I'd say to you, yeah, this is a great idea because Taurians are actually good at long-term relationships. They're actually naturals at it. Starting relationships, you're okay in, in starting them. Enduring a relationship is what you're best at. Ending a relationship is where you have a problem. Okay? It's in ending relationships that you really have an issue. And the reason for that is, is that you're not only a fixed sign, but you're a fixed earth sign. It doesn't matter what situation you're in, you want to get the most out of that situation before you move on. That often means that sometimes you can stay within relationships that have long, like out, long, you know, outworn its usefulness. You can stay in relationships beyond the point of use, usefulness. Um, but one thing I will say for you, Taurus, is that I've never met a Taurian that stayed in a relationship past usefulness and found themselves in an adverse situation financially. I'm sure there are Taurians out there who have found themselves in adverse financial situations after a breakup. I'm sure they're out there. And I know at least one who's out there now. But for the most part with Taurians is that you, you don't leave a relationship when you're supposed to leave it. Nine times out of ten, you don't let that go when you're supposed to let it go, right? Now, the good part about that is, like I said before, your assets are better protected because you take your time before deciding whether or not you want to leave the person. When it comes to commitment, though, again, please consult experts if you need further advice on this this is just for entertainment purposes and learning purposes but what i'm about to say to you taurus is that before you commit to someone have financial safeguards in place and have emotional safeguards in place if you can afford to get therapy for both yourself and your relationship do it if you can afford to get a prenup before you marry a person do it if you can afford to get life insurance, if you haven't got life insurance already, if you can afford pensions, all of that, get all of that sorted out. Get the paperwork sorted out. And the reason why you want to do this now is not because, you know, it's not to guarantee that you'll stay together. That's not what this is. It's that when push comes to shove and you need an exit, you don't stay longer than you need to for the sole purpose of maintaining your material wealth you don't stay longer than you need to one example that i can think of is janet jackson now i don't know if she's a vedic taurus but she's a prime example right she had a certain arrangement with the man that she was married to and she said that you know there was an agreement that if she stayed for about five years then she would get this much upon the divorce she stayed for exactly five years and then she walked out the door so she did not stay she she stayed the course because again she's a sun sign taurus at the very least and taurians are good at that she stayed the course but she didn't stay longer than she needed to 
That's why you have the safeguards in place, Taurus, is so that you don't have to stay any longer than necessary. The whole thing about vex money, usually it's a Taurian that teaches people that, but this is something that needs to be reiterated. Right now, in November, it's about making sure you have as independent a life as possible. It's about making sure that you maintain everything that you worked effing hard to get. This is what it's about. It's about having that foundation of a solid, independent life before you commit to another person and also that mentor that i talked about they are related to your separate interests and separate ambitions away from your partner if you have one that's what they're related to and that's exactly what they will help you with and that's where your focus needs to be i'm not saying to neglect your partner or to neglect or neglect your relationships that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that the safeguards ensure that even if your heart gets broken, I'm not going to say when because it seems like these relationships that you're in are really quite settled and really quite deep. If your heart gets broken, then you have yourself to come back to. That's ultimately what it's about, Taurus. That's ultimately what this month is going to be about. You're going to want to focus on love. You're going to want to focus on, you know, soulmate energy and, and being together with the person. You're even going to want to focus on open obstacles. But no, this is about you. This is about your life, where you want it to go. And as such, you need to prioritize your own needs. And to ensure those own needs will be taken care of if love doesn't work out or even if your career doesn't work out. And speaking of which, your physical health needs are looking at too, even though you're Taurus and quite frankly, especially with Critica, um, I don't see you guys wanting for very much when it comes to your physical health and vitality, because you know, a lot of you are gonna be considering that already. So yeah, that this, this month is for you, Taurus, overall. This month is about you, okay? It's about you maintaining your independence. So that was for Taurus, that was for Kritika, Rohini and Rigashira. Thank you so much, Taurus. Have a wonderful November. Bye-bye. Vergs now, okay? So this is for Uttara Palguni, Hasta and Chitra. Hi Virgo, how's it going? So, for you, we've got the Queen of Coins, we've got the Five of Coins for you, and we have got the Seventh House of Relationship for you. Now, this is very interesting. Mm, now, what, what do I get here? Oh, you see what I'm getting here? I'm getting... The scales, the balancing scales, Virgo. Mm. I think you're adapting very well to your situation. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. When I looked at your... You, you need to go back to the um, Pisces, Rahu and Virgo, Ki, Virgo Kitu reading for you. Because I saw a lot of wonderful things happening for you. Um, and you need to go back and look at that. In terms of November, I feel like things could be better for you, Virgo. I'm not going to lie. Um, you need to focus on your ninth house and your seventh, apparently. I feel like with your ninth and seventh together, it's about law and it's about legalities. That might come into question quite a bit for you throughout November Virgo and with the Queen and Five you're trying to make the most of what's going on around you materially but it's not working out so well there is going to be a fortunate twist of fate though I must tell you this right for the first part of November you are going to attempt to make the most out of what you have it's not going to work out well. You're going to cut and carve 
only to find that things are not where they need to be anyway. So it's almost like you have to make a decision as to what you're going to do. Are you going to focus on your long-term gratification or are you going to focus on your short-term gratification? Because you are sacrificing a lot of short-term gratifications and at first it's really fulfilling to you because, you know, even though you're missing out on you know, you're missing out on the feeling of socializing rather than an actual socializing. Um, being, having money issues throughout November is kind of forcing you to engage more with other people. And ironically, you end up having more fun. So it's like, it starts out being a bit of a pain, but it kind of ends with you <laughs> engaging more with people it ends with you having better business connections. It ends with you actually having more money than you did before these money problems came along. So it's like, it, it's weird. It's the, the lack of, the seeming lack of success and the seeming lack of money at the start of November. By the end of November, you have better business connections. You have a better social life. You have a better love life. You have a better everything or because you had to sacrifice some short-term gains and you couldn't do the same thing you couldn't do the same things that you were doing anymore now you can't just be content with the feeling of having someone there now you actually have to have someone there with you and it is way better for you and your mental health than how you were living before because how you were living before you could convince yourself that you were socializing when you weren't. You could have that feeling of socializing with people without actually having to do it. But now you're forced into actually engaging with people. And because of that, it works out better in all kinds of different ways. It works out better for you. Which is wild, but that's, that's, how, it, that's how it transpires. Now with your ninth house being highlighted and your seventh, it's not just about law. It's also about long-term fortune and relationships. Okay, so your ninth and your seventh are highlighted. So it's about long-term fortune and relationships. It seems to me that as though you do need to focus on these things, but it may be that you're already focusing on these things that actually might be ca causing your money issues. It's not because you're not taking care of your money, it's because you are taking care of your money and you are being responsible and you are thinking of the future and you are working towards your future. So basically, Virgo, what's going on right now is that you're in a transitional period. That's why you've had so many money problems lately. It's not just the cost of living because the cost of living is hitting everybody. But with the cost of living, instead of focusing on short-term survival like everybody else seems to be doing, you're actually focused on what you want to accomplish long-term. That is where your mind needs to be this month. You're absolutely, you've got your priorities straight, Virgo. You have got your priorities straight. It's just not going to be very easy. It's not going to be easy, but the rewards at the end of November are killer. Oh, okay. The rewards at the end of November are fabulous. I can say that for you, Virgo. Now, I'm going to get into your notes. I'm going to be as positive as I can be because I want you to have a great November, Virgo. I want you to have a good one. So I'm going to be as positive as I can. If I can find the incense, I'm going to light the incense and see what else I can get for you. But yeah, let me get the incense first and then, yeah, we can find out what's in store for you because I want you to have a good, I want you to have a good November. And also, I'm going to draw out some additional cards for you. Alright, so I'm going to read these now. Outdoor projects, farming, practical choice, common sense, money trouble, debts, becoming the breadwinner, seeking help. Relationships, caring and loving boss. 
put a pin in that and kind of I'm going to come back to it real estate depending on charity helping someone living your financial dream so we want a pin in caring and loving boss and living your financial dream and then we've got sharing luxury okay so all of that is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to your social life you're having to prioritize different things financially you're not poor you're not lacking but you're having to make different priorities now so you can't live the same way that you're used to yeah for your most important notes we've got lack of success mastering money the hard way poor taste lack of care and crisis in the home truth be told um I know that as I say that it will probably manifest in some way but I honestly don't see a crisis in the home I see that you cannot be as reliant on your home to fulfill you and to sustain you as you have been you can't rely on that to actually provide your emotional satisfaction anymore because there's so many different things that are happening and changing and growing around you and I want to put a pin in caring and loving boss and living your financial dream because again that's what's at the root of all these changes happening in your life the reason why there's so much money that seems to be coming out of your account and you seem to not be doing well financially is that you're actually living your financial dream you're actually putting you're actually putting your plans into action so when you're spending money, you're not spending money on frivolities, you're spending money on your long-term goals. That's what's at the root of all this. And I know it sucks because it's like cost of living is, is got everybody by the short and curlies. Everybody's suffering right now. Everybody's got stuff that, you know, they need to focus on. Everybody's hurting right now. So it's not easy for you. But you are more focused on long-term goals. And when it comes to you being the breadwinner, there are some of you who might have been dependent on other people to help you or to get you out of financial holes. But because everybody else is in the same position you are, you might become more self-sufficient and you might, might become just a bit more ruthless and a bit more you know ingenious in how you gain more money or how you make more money you may be ending up being more ambitious towards your long-term goals because you're like okay i'm living this way now i'm not going to live this way in the future there ain't no fucking way so i'm going to make plans to ensure that in the long-term future i can make something work for myself financially and you understand that in the short term that there are sacrifices that must be made and you're okay with that okay living your financial dream you're actually investing in your financial dream it's it like i see you studying more i see you working more i see you i actually see you earning more money it's just where you put that money that seems to be making you feel like you're impoverished even though truth be told you're in November things are actually looking quite good for you financially you're not you're not lacking you're not struggling for money it's just that because you're prioritizing your long-term goals and you're not indulging yourself in the same way that you used to you're not staying in your home so much you're socializing more you're you, you know there are certain things that are happening and it's just making you feel like you know, I don't, it doesn't make me feel wealthy to have to go out and meet people. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel wealthy to have to go out and meet people. It does not make me feel wealthy to not spend money on crap and to just actually have to save it towards. All of this doesn't make me feel wealthy. And yet, you are building your wealth. You are building your wealth. That's exactly what you're doing. Because you already made up your mind that if I'm going to be wealthy there are certain sacrifices that have to be made and you're willing to make them but look at the legalities of things know your rights because there are certain rights that you're entitled to 
and if you know your rights and you know the law especially financially then you'll find that you have a lot of advantages up your sleeve Virgo you have a lot of advantages up your sleeve when you look at the financial laws in place wild it's wild and speaking of which again I'm not an expert this is for educational purposes this is for um, learning pur educational purposes and, and entertainment um, invest in as much as you can about financial education invest in financial education as much as you can that's what you need to be doing at this point Virgo so whilst all this is happening really read as many books as possible on finances read financial newspapers um you know learn as much as you can about money at this at this point and at this moment in time and especially about financial law or corporate law you will find that the more you know about these things the more these things the more armed you are when it comes to managing your money so yeah it's a transitional period for virgos things seem to not be going well financially but they are actually going quite well they're going quite well it's just it's just a little bit painful at the moment you know is that it you're saving up towards ownership oh that's why okay all right um you're saving up to own not rent for some of you virgos i don't know if that makes sense but you're saving up to own not rent that's why all of this is happening and you're being responsible and being responsible it doesn't always mean that you're going to get out smooth you see that's what nobody tells you people tell you you need to be responsible with your money manage your money be smart with your money be smart with everything but nobody tells you how uncomfortable it gets nobody ever tells you that now granted you've made the decision that you're gonna own and not rent you've made that decision so you are not bothered you don't care all right because you understand what it means to to have your own things and be self-sufficient and have ownership of your own life so Virgo you're not you, you're just not making a big deal out of this you've made your decision and you're sticking to it but nobody tells you how uncomfortable it gets to be responsible nobody ever tells you that doing the right thing it comes with it comes with its own set of hard so it really comes down to choosing what your heart is and you've made your decision you've decided i'm going to i'm going to choose short term difficulty you know for long term ease you've made that decision but nobody ever tells you how hard it's going to be so if you're feeling like a bit hemmed in by this don't kick yourself about it don't kick yourself about it you know just try to enjoy as much of your life as you can Virgo and that's the best that you can do so that's it for Virgo that was for Uttara Palguni, Hasta and Chitra um, I do see yeah you're on your way to work towards living a wealthier life that's what all of this is that's why all of this is happening a wealthier life is beckoning for you and you understand that this year is make or break and you've decided make is your only option so this is what you're doing okay and i'm going to end it there otra palguni hasta and chitra thank you so much virgo oh and consult your d9 chart virgo for more information on what's going on here consult consult your novemsha yeah so yeah that's it so Peace and blessings, Virgo. I love you so much. You've got this, baby. You've got this. Take care. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.
Gem Gems. This is from Rigashira, Ardra and Ponabasu. How are you doing, Geminis? So for you, we've got the Queen of Cups. We've got the Ten of Wands. An interesting Virgo. We've got, uh, sorry, Gemini. We've got the North Node, your future. Rahu. Okay, I find this particularly interesting because, you know, in your sign, well, in your sign, there's the Ardra Nakshatra, isn't there? Storms coming. Big storms, big changes. Huge. Huge changes ahead. All right. So, you're being asked to focus on your 12th house. This is a period of release. It's not a period of loss. Do not take it as a period of loss. But this is a period of release. There are subconscious urges and drives that must be released at this time. And they will be released during this month. Okay. And also you have gifts to release as well. You have to release your gifts, release your talents onto the world, Gemini, if you haven't already been doing that. So this is a period of release, letting go. You also have to release and let go of the past. You've got to embrace the future, okay? Now, you've got great things coming in November, Gemini. Let's not get this twisted. You've got great things coming. So you've got valuable connections, overnight success, psychic abilities, endurance in work, degree of offered responsibility, batteries recharged, intuitive leadership, taking on too much, strong psychic, new contract, working hard, achieving, being proud, risk taker, sporty and fun person. Let's see if I've got anything else for you. Nope, that's it. But you've got a great November coming up. Let's be absolutely real. You've got an amazing November coming up. And I see that for November, it is going to be largely positive for you. There's going to be a lot of really positive situations happening for you. I feel like that's exactly why you need to release the past. You, there are certain things that you need to be released out of your life subconsciously, right? Because November has you looking forward to a really good month. It, it's a fabulous month for you. There are so many good things to be enjoyed and you can't fully enjoy them if you're too caught up in the past. But really, that's all I can see. All I can see is internal struggle. I can't see any external baggage here. I can't see that. I can only see like, you know, the most beautiful external circumstances happening to Gemini. Listen, you have suffered enough. You have suffered enough, Gemini. And now it is your time to celebrate. You have paid your dues karmically. You have done exactly what you need to do karmically. Now it's your time to enjoy yourself. November is your time to enjoy right now. You've got wonderful things coming up for you. I do see that there's more connection to familial situations and to friendships rather than romance i do see that for you gemini but it's still great it's still wonderful and i see that you are going to succeed in things that you actually love to do that you enjoy doing i see the destiny is on your side i see that you're right for some of you check your natal chart because your rahu is kicking okay your rahu is kicking and you are actually more in line with your destiny than you have been recently and because of that because you're in line with your destiny but you're not forcing anything what you may experience is a lot of you know a lot of beautiful soft sort of happenings coming in for you you may experience a lot of good fortune coming in for you there are a lot of wonderful things happening and Yeah, Gemini's things are looking really, really good for you. I can't lie to you because again, karma has been kicking your ass. <laughs> karma has really been kicking your ass, and I can relate. I, I've had that. I've had that happen to me. I've had a phase where karma has just whooped my butt. But now is your time to shine, and it's your time to enjoy. Let me get some extra cards for you. 
so that we can get more clarity on this situation yeah so gem gems yeah what's, what's in store for you you've got the knight of swords okay so somebody's in your corner fighting for you making sure you're all right okay and then we've got the four of pentacles or the four of pentacles as i like to call it um financially things are looking okay they're not looking too bad um the thing is gemini's are usually associated with being spendthrift but i actually see you being a bit a bit tight with your money i feel like you need to to spend a bit more you're getting a break you're getting a mental break which is lovely you might find yourself in the same situation as you were before but it's different because you're finding is that there's more of a relaxed period happening in your life at the moment so there's no like massive changes happening in terms of your home environment and in terms of your career per se but it's like you're getting a nice break it's a nice you know it's a nice break period for you there's more emphasis on learning some of you might be going back to college or going back to university okay going back to learning beautiful beautiful lots of small victories throughout your life in november which is really really good for you oh the empress smiles on you you have really beautiful fortune when it comes to i feel like some of you are really being looked after physically and emotionally you're really being taken care of you kind of deserve it you've been through a lot you, you kind of deserve this honestly you like you've been through so much this entire year and it's it's wonderful that i can get a nice reading for you for november with this again it's a period of release this represents pisces a specific planet in pisces i can't remember which but this represents pisces so there's a period of letting go that still has to be observed let go of the past I feel like some of you have been kind of holding on too tightly to past events and stuff like that and you know it's kind of messing with your perception of the reality of what's around you because if you really look around at the present moment there's so many wonderful things to enjoy yeah spirit is speaking to you and you don't seem to be listening Gem spirit is speaking to you and they're speaking through you you feel me? You know, you need to... Spirit is speaking through you. You need to listen, Gem, because, you know, spirit is on your side at this moment. And then you've got seven of wands, right? Somebody gets on the defensive with you, Gemini. There's somebody who gets on the defensive with you. Like, they, you know, it's it's like it's one of those situations where every time you say something they gotta say something i'm thinking can they just fucking chill like the, can they just chill every single time you the, oh Lord. every time you say something they gotta say something like shut up for real just stop talking damn like <sighs> do you know what i mean it's it's just it's just um yeah and the thing is for some of you nine times out of ten you're not even talking about the person that's interjecting themselves all the time like they, you know they, they just can't seem to i don't know what it is about you gemini but like they just can't seem to mind their business like the, you know if i say something it ain't got nothing to do with you just just shut up mind your business do you know what I mean? But that's exactly what you have to deal with. Like busybody behavior, Gem. You've got to deal with busybody behavior. So, you know, it's it's wonderful for you. And I, I do love it, Gemini. This is one of the best readings that I've gotten for you. But just be in mind that some people might just want to... You know, they might just be doing too much. You've got to prepare for that. You've got to prepare for that. 
some people might do too much when it comes to you gemini but overall it's not going to harsh your vibe for this november this november it looks wonderful for you it looks like you're really going to do some amazing things and you know you are going to enjoy yourself in november i do see that for you do you understand what i'm saying so yeah gemini this is a really really good month for you i'm kind of happy for you not even kind of i'm very happy for you <laughs> i'm very happy for you like oh my god this is long overdue long overdue i'm telling you you know what i mean it's long overdue mate enjoy enjoy your good fortune enjoy your happiness because you absolutely deserve it and i'm happy to say that there's more coming absolutely so yeah, that was for Gem Gem. That was for, hold on a minute. That was for Rigashira, Ardra and Punavasu. Geminis, please enjoy this month. You've more than earned it. Take care, peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pisces. This is for Purva Bhadrapada, Purva Bhadrapada, Uttara Bhadrapada, and Revati. Okay. Now let's see what we've got for you. We have got the Two of Swords for you. We have got the Chariot for you. And we have got the Moon Perception. Now this is going to be very interesting. So what can we get for you for your reading for November so what I've got for you is first of all your third house is highlighted this month that means that's where your area of interest needs to be it needs to be in your third house um, you are going to be coming back to your childhood you are going to be coming back to certain times in your past and this is actually going to be necessary for you in order to move forward and you do have to confront how you feel about certain events coming up in your life during your early years and how your community responded. Now, this is neutral, which means that some of you Pisceans may experience positive emotions when you look at these things. You may experience positive emotions of your childhood. You may experience you know what really made you feel joy during those times and you might find yourselves revisiting them which is wonderful but then there are others of you who may experience significant events that are negative and that have had adverse effects on your life now and that's not so easy to deal with okay but themes around the third house your extended family your immediate community your formal education or early education all of these things are going to come into play during the month of November for you Pisceans and it's going to be up to you to navigate these emotions that they stir you know these early memories stir up in you and it's going to be up to you to do what you can to heal the themes surrounding the third house in your life all right now let's get to the notes so we've got precision success in love Objective thoughts, mind reader, lots of travel, walking away with a heavy heart, chakra realignment, perception, quiet before the storm, oh yeah, unable to speak feelings, strong world, passionate person, silent treatment, strong competitor, strong networker, hurtful personality, passion for fairness and strong law enforcer. Pisces, I feel like you're not putting your feelings into words. You're putting your feelings into action. I feel like you couldn't even begin to physically, well, I feel like you couldn't even begin to verbally express the amount of strong feelings that are coming up in you this month. And I feel like when it comes to the larger themes that you have to deal with this month, there's going to be more emphasis on putting your plans into action. So you're going through a similar thing to Virgo. You're putting plans into action and it's not a happy occasion for either sign.
but it's a necessary period of transition. Only in your case, you are stronger in dealing with your issues than maybe Virgo is. Virgo is experiencing things that they really don't want to experience. They're pushing through, definitely, but you are absolutely strong and absolutely determined and absolutely willing to push through and move through your obstacles with absolute precision and certainty and ferocity. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you're not playing games when it comes to this. And when it comes to the two of swords energy, you have the objectivity to look at your situation with more practicality and to think to yourself, okay, this is how I feel. How am I gonna handle this? Do you understand what I mean? You're connected with your emotions, but you're also detached from it long enough to be like, okay, how can I utilize this to my advantage? Okay. And the reason why you're so focused on physically expressing or putting your plan into action, the reason why you're so focused on doing that is because, again, you can't put your experiences into words. It's not something that you can vocalize very easily. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the feelings that come up during your early years, because there's so much clarification and there's so much clarity on what happened to you during your early childhood, either good or bad, there's no way to verbally make sense of it yet. You're not there yet. So what you're gonna end up doing instead is you're gonna see potential problems or potential inspiration from your past memories then you're gonna write those things down and then you're gonna act on them because that's the only way you know how to express how you feel is through actions. Nine times out of 10, right? When it comes to Pisceans, a lot of people assume that... Sorry, one second, everyone. Okay, so Pisceans, a lot of people assume that you're flaky, but the thing about it is, is that you actually express your feelings through actions. Whereas, uh, okay, I'm talking about Pisces Virgo again, because that axis is important, right? Whereas Virgo is focused on the practical aspects and kind of emotionally connecting with practical aspects and emotionally connecting with, you know, the more pragmatic aspects of life. With Pisces, it's almost like an opposite thing. It's like you guys, you guys channel your emotions into something physical, whereas Virgo kind of does the opposite. They channel their pragmatic experiences into emotional, yeah, it's like, it mirror images of one another. So it's like you do the same thing, but in, in for different reasons. It's like for Virgo, they want to transcend the physical experience. Whereas Pisceans, you want to transcend the emotional experience. And as such, this is why you find it difficult to actually talk about your feelings and you're more inclined towards... Um, you're more inclined towards acting out how you feel. That's where you get the reputation for being flaky because if you don't feel like you want to talk to people, then you won't talk to them. If you don't feel like you want to be distracted right now, you're not going to allow yourself to be distracted. That's the fundamental difference between this axis of Pisces Virgo because you know, it, 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 it's it's different. With you, Pisces, you're acting on your emotions, like I said before, and I know I'm repeating myself, you're acting on your emotions. You're not, you're not talking about them. You're not dealing with them in the way that other people want you to, because other people want you to talk about how you feel when all you want to do is focus on how you can express yourself physically and how you can actually move forward and again people don't normally associate you with silent action but that's exactly what you do you engage in silent acts you engage in 
silent actions and silent behavior. You move in silence nine times out of 10 Pisces. You know, with Virgoans, they don't move in silence. They move and they talk. Whereas Pisceans, you know, nine times out of 10, you move in silence. You don't tell anybody what you're doing. So it's like, you, you're not telling anybody how you feel right now because the emotions are too strong to process and you're acting on your feelings by putting plans into actions. You're doing something concrete. And I feel like you're doing something concrete in terms of helping others with similar experiences to yours or, you know, engaging in your career or engaging in your work. You're very work oriented at this time during this month. You're very work oriented at the moment, Pisces. And it might that might not leave a lot of room for emotional understanding and this is not you trying to be hurtful or trying to be mean to anybody. This is just you being incredibly focused and doing exactly what you need to be doing. Now, ordinarily, I tell you, you need to prioritize other people a little bit more. But I've got to be honest with you, Pisces, that's actually the last thing that you need to be doing. You don't need to be focusing on other people's feelings right now. What matters is how you deal with your feelings. What matters is how you process what's happened to you and how you're going to move through that. Right now, it has to be about you and your self-expression. And if other people have a problem with you not vocalizing things, oh, well, I'm sorry, you can't help that. The people who truly love you, they will understand exactly what you have to do. Okay, if, if there are people out there that truly love you and there are people out there that truly love you, then they will then they will appreciate you i've got success in love as part of your notes so it could be very likely that somebody the, the somebody ugh, that somebody that you love that loves you understands what you have to do and instead of pressuring you to spend more time with them they're actually very very encouraging they're very encouraging towards what you do so is there anything else I can see for Pisces? I hear the word dog. Loyalty. Some of you in relationships, Pisces, could find that your loyalty is being tested. Some of you could find that your loyalty is being tested. Some of you could find that you know, it's not being tested in the sense that, you know, you're in a relationship and you want to be with someone else. That's not what it is. There are some of you Pisceans that actually have had questions put to you about commitment and you do want to commit. That could be at the crux as, you know, you, that could be why you're so determined to move forward physically it could be why you're so determined in your work because these questions of commitment are something that you're taking relatively seriously and you actually want to be in a, in a committed position but because you're thinking of the long term you know like Virgo's doing they're, they're thinking of the long term because you're thinking of the long term you're like do I really do I really want to be messing around with short-term interests like this do i really want to be doing that that's why you're working so hard and that's why you're not saying anything it's because now a seed has been planted in your mind about long-term commitment and that's where you want to be that's where you want to be and that's what you're trying to work towards so now now you don't have the time to talk and you don't have the time to you know engage in small talk with people like, do you have something for me that's connected to what I'm trying to do? If you don't, please move forward. Please move along. I've got stuff to do. So you're going to be very, your mind is going to be very much focused on the game for, for November. Your mind is going to be very, very focused. So is there anything else for Pisces? I think I see a wedding dress. I see a wedding dress. Some of you want to propose to somebody, but you don't know the right words to use in order to do that. 
Yeah, some of you want to propose. Don't do it yet. I know, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but don't do it yet. What, give it time. If this is you, if you want to propose, I think you should give it time. Give it time before you before you make that decision. Look at Taurians. Look at the Taurian reading for November in order to get more insight on that. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say to you, Pisces. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that was for you. That was for Porofa Bajrapada, Otara Bajrapada and Ray Vati. Okay. Thank you, Pisces. Okay. Aries now. So this is for Ashwini, Barini and Kritika. So your cards, Aries, are the Nine of Cups. I'm sorry, this is blurry. The King of Swords and... The trine sextile symbiosis. I already like this series. Let's see what we get with this. So, first of all, your focus is supposed to be on your second house. Now, I feel like out of all the signs, you're going to have the most straightforward time in November. And the reason I say this is because the second house and focusing on all the themes of the second house is going to feel very, very comfortable for you because it's truth be told it's all an area wants to do anyway all an area wants to do is what they enjoy doing and what has connected with them from early childhood that's usually what an area ends up doing throughout their lives especially those with an ashwini placement okay they they like to do things that connect with their childhood and connect with their deeper sense of security that's what they end up doing throughout their lives love that for you um and that's exactly where you need to be focused that's exactly what you need to be focused on and also earning your own money as well so rather than other people's money like the eighth house this is about your money your possessions your wealth and also it's about your personal beauty as well your personal looks because the second house is about the face, regardless of uh, male, female, masculine, feminine, the second house is about the face. So focusing on your physical beauty as well is going to be really important. But again, Aryans don't really have that much of a problem with that. So out of all the 12 signs, I can see that you are going to have the most straightforward time out of everybody. You're going probably going to have the least problems. But let's see from the notes what we get for you, okay? So we've got CEO, manipulating facts, cruel in love, getting what you want, all the pieces coming together, much success, reunion, long awaited return, old knowledge with fresh eyes, symbiosis, talented surgeon, master detective, professional career and special aid therapy. And the most important notes we've got are fame and fortune and gratitude. It seems like Aries, your it's not necessarily that your star is on the rise, is that it seems like you will have more favorable attention for the work that you actually do. This is why I feel like, I feel like this is gonna be quite a short reading in comparison to the others, Aries, because it's as straightforward as this. You put work into something that you love to do. You've promoted that thing that you love to do. And now, you're getting really, really positive attention as a result of the work that you've done. So most of the month is going to be like this. It's going to be just you enjoying the spoils of some of the work that you've been doing and continuing to work in things that you really enjoy doing. But now with the additional attention, of course, you have to get your game face on. You've got to think about you know your physical beauty and your physical presentation and how you appear to people now that has to take more of a priority now because you're getting positive attention for what you do now they need a face to that to keep them coming back to the work that you're doing so it's not just about what you do it's about how you present what you're doing so there are there is going to be more emphasis on marketing more emphasis on 
you know how to relate to the people that are buying your records and stuff like that or if you're a musician buying your your records if you're a an artist buying your artwork if you're a writer buying your books all that type of stuff even if you're not in the creative industry if you're just a like if you're just an entrepreneur or you're an angel investor or something like that there's something about personal image that operates as its own pr that's why we have image consultants so it's like thinking about developing yourself as a brand to keep people coming back to what you do because again you're getting the attention that you deserve for your work now comes the part where you have to kind of reckon with how people respond to you when they see who you are when they see the face behind the work so you're getting a lot of positive things are happening for you in terms of your career the only thing that i will say is mind your business literally mind your business because there are other people who are doing something similar to what you're doing and they don't appear to be as successful as you but in reality they're actually doing they actually have their eyes on bigger ambitions than yours so whilst it seems like they're not doing as well as you are what you have to be careful of is presuming that you know exactly what they need to be doing because you know what you need to be doing this month mind your business mind the business that pays you trust me there are other people that you think are not doing as well without you they got their stuff covered mate you need to focus on what you're doing so is there anything else i can get for aries i've got children running around with aries it's not just about your inner child somebody's pregnant somebody's pregnant or somebody's about to have a child and for some reason you're involved in that because it's not anybody connected to you it's somebody else's pregnancy affects you i'm not entirely sure how that is it's like it's like a six degrees of separation type thing when they have a child it affects your life sort of not sure how um good way or bad way i'd say be careful be aware be aware of how it might affect you for some of you it might affect your living situation for others of you it might affect your family situation yeah be on your guard though be on your guard yeah but yeah somebody's having a child with Aries not with you but there's somebody that's having a child in your case and that's affected your life in some way just just be very careful with that I think that's it with Aries for November 2023. So that was for Ashwini, Barini and Kritika. Thank you so much, Aries. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Scorpio, this is for Vishaka, Anuradha and Jeshla. So things are looking real good. <laughs> things are looking real good for Scorpio. So let's see what's in store for you. Okay, so we've got the nine of coins for you for November. We've got the ten of cups for you. And we have Leo for you. Okay. Now... When it comes to your house to be focused on, Scorpio, you are called to focus on your seventh house. This is the house of your shadow self. It's the house of your private but more ambitious self. It's the house of your relationships, your most significant relationships. It's the house of your private image, like how you think of yourself with regards to the outside world. So if like the first house is to do with how you publicly interact with the world, the seventh house is 
is really about the, the side of yourself that you keep hidden or the side of yourself that you're constantly being met with. You know, for example, Taurians, right? Uh, Taurians took the spotlight this month. If you were a Taurian, right, your shadow side would be death. So you'd be surrounded by death a lot if you were a Taurian. But because you're a Scorpio, you're surrounded by life. You're surrounded by physical wealth. You're surrounded by physical pleasure. You're, su you're, you're surrounded by um, things of enjoyment. You're surrounded by people who know how to form long-lasting relationships. That's what you're surrounded by. You're surrounded more by life than death. And that's exactly what you need to be focused on. You need to be focused on the side of your life that you often don't acknowledge. And you also need to be more focused on your significant relationships. So this month is not going to be about you, unfortunately. But there are wonderful things to come for you in November. And quite frankly, I love to see it. So let's read the notes for you so we can get, you know, a, a more accurate picture of what's in store for you. So we've got for you Scorpio, security, affording the finer things, long-term success, celebratory gathering, building on happy foundations, shine, beautiful home, strong family, new family member, established wealth, creative happiness, happiness in the family, investing in study, diplomatic offer, peacekeeper, and deep love. So not all of that is in the nine of coins, by the way. We've also got the 10 of cups and we've also got Leah. I've got a certain amount of brain fog because of, um, long story, but I've got brain fog. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, beautiful times ahead for the for the Scorpios and with Leo shine Leo is associated with your 10th house so you're going to have a lot of fun you're going to have a lot of fun in November during this month and especially with regards to your career I feel like your work environment has a lot of enjoyable moments in it I'm not entirely sure why but I feel like you working and you being a part of the workplace you may enjoy it more than you normally do. And I feel like it's because there are certain elements within the workspace that appeal to your talents in particular. So you could experience being the star of the office in a way. If you're working, you could experience being the star of the office. If you're self-employed, you could experience like a lot of positive attention. I feel like family looks really, really good for you as well. I feel like you're going to enjoy new life coming into the family. You're not the only one. I've got that for Aries as well. But Scorpio, it feels like you have new life coming into the family. But in your case, it's going to be really, really positive. Like for Aries, I got that it was neutral. It could have a neutral effect. It could go either way. But with you, it's definitely good. You're surrounded by life. You're surrounded by enjoyment. You're surrounded by joy. Like, make the most of it. Bask in it. Because this is going to set a strong foundation for your financial life and for your career. Fame and fortune I've really got to get into because that's your most important note. Right now is your time to shine. I know that it sounds contradictory compared to what house you're supposed to focus on. But this is actually exactly why you're supposed to focus on your seventh house and you're supposed to focus on your relationships and who to bring up with you and who to leave behind. So your seventh house is going to be absolutely crucial because you are experiencing a rise in your star status. You're, you're experiencing a growth in your public profile. And on top of that, you're having the most fun with it. So this is a great month for, for Scorpios. This is a great month for you. You're truly enjoying yourself. You're truly, you know, at the top of your game. And then on top of that, your family has new life breathing into it. There's new life for your family to enjoy on top of that. So it's wonderful. It's great. You're enjoying yourself immensely right now. 
and even though the lunar the lunar notes could bring something different like the full moon could bring something different or the new moon can bring something different we're talking about the overall picture of the month and the overall picture of the month it looks like you're really going to be enjoying yourself okay let's see what else i can get you're another sign that's going to be leaving the past behind the other one was gemini but i feel like with you scorpio you're also going to be leaving the past behind but there's going to be so much celebration like there's so much celebration there's so much like you know it's like keeping the party going do you understand what i mean so even letting go of the past which is normally something that would send you into a deep depression it just there's just so much to enjoy and so much to be thankful for that you're not even mad about it it's like okay there are certain past things i've got to let go of but because you're having so much fun in november and you're enjoying yourself so much it doesn't matter to you it's like okay i have to let go of certain things of the past i've got to let go of certain grudges all right cool party Woo! <laughs> I love it for you. <laughs> I love that for you. Mm. I love that for you. I really, really do. Like, let me just get some more clarification. I feel like you're, it's your family life that's at the root of this, okay? Your work life is going beautifully. Your finances are going relatively well. I feel like at the root of this is the new life that comes into the family. It could be an adoptive person, you know, an adopted son, daughter, or niece and nephew, something like that. Or it could be a new birth that brings families together. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay. It could be a new birth that brings families together. Fantastic. Fan. Fantastic. And I do love that for you, Scorpio. It's going to be a wonderful month for you. Okay. Let me just see yeah i think that's it for you scorpio enjoy that's all i can say so <laughs> i'd love that for you i wasn't expecting that i was not expecting that but i'm so happy that like you've got such a wonderful month ahead of you so scorpio take it easy baby bye-bye mm -hmm. Oh, a sage. Now let's have a look at this and see what's going on. So for you, Mula, Parva Ashara and Uttara Ashara, let's just have a look at your overall picture first, Sagittarius, and see what we're getting here. So you need to focus on your sixth house. So your daily life, your open obstacles, open enemies, all of those things need to be considered. Services, uh, you know, personal care how you take care of yourself, all those types of things, they are going to, going to come front and centre um, with regards to the month of November, okay? And also your physical health as well. But I was really intrigued by this because we've also got the first house. With the first house and the sixth house together, what we end up with is not just physical health, we end up with diet and exercise. Now, I know... I know. Sagittarius, I get that that's your Achilles heel, okay? But the wonderful thing about this, right, is that you almost stumble into a healthier life by accident. And I know, isn't that the best? Isn't it the best when you're not forcing it? But you kind of stumble into a healthy life by accident you kind of stumble into it it's like without realizing it and without meaning to you end up eating healthier you end up being more active and because of that you know you're not you're not aware of what you're doing at first but then you become aware of what you're doing and you think to yourself hang on i'm actually physically stronger there are things that i can do now that i couldn't do before 
So maybe take that a step further. Maybe do yoga or martial arts. Maybe do dancing, something like that. So it's like because you're already focusing on your health and you're already doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's going to be a part of you, Sagittarius, that's going to want to expand on that. Take it. Take the opportunity to expand on to expand on your health routine. Do you understand what I'm saying? But because you're Sagittarius, the way you need to do it is you need to like dip your toe into several waters. When it comes to finding an exercise regimen or a diet regimen, what you've got to do is you've got to stick your toe briefly into different waters, find out which how one find out which one has the right temperature, the right water clarity, all that type of shit. Like you've got to dip several toes in the water in order to find out what's right for you. So instead of doing your usual thing and diving headfirst into one particular discipline, doing it for two weeks and then not doing it for five years, instead of doing that, work the other way round. Be real non-committal this month when it comes to certain regimes that will hang on. Be real committal, real non-committal when it comes to certain routines that you want to engage in. Be extremely non-committal in the beginning. And then kind of give yourself time to latch onto whatever feels most comfortable to you. So instead of starting out really disciplinarian and then not committing all the way, start off real non-committal. Because starting off that way, it will allow you to actually commit without feeling like you're being hemmed in. Do you understand what I mean? Because it's important for a Sagittarius more than anything not to feel hemmed in by their workout or by their health and exercise. They cannot feel hemmed in, right? The only way they're gonna tolerate feeling hemmed in is if sport is something that they naturally like to do and that's not always the case for Sag, okay? Now, I already talked about the cards that I've got for you here. So I need to go into the notes for you. We've got studying the family business, following the family tradition, strong success, hey, long-term success, double degree, much studying, return to childhood, introduction to working world, arrival, diplomatic message, learning on the job, actor, emotional strength, working with students, mentoring, new friendships, working in charity and generous job offer. Sag, you're on your way, baby. You're on your way. <laughs> and what I love for you is that this isn't like, it's not like this big explosion of fireworks happening in your life in November, but there is a lot of success to be found. It, it seems like you're in a similar trajectory to Virgo right now. You're working towards your long-term success but in your particular case, in your particular case, Sagittarius, a lot of your endeavors are very, very successful. Okay, so Sagittarius, the difference with you is that you have a lot of long-term success coming your way. Hang on a second. Sorry about this, Sag. Hang on. Give me a second. All right, Sag. So the difference between you and Virgo is that you've got a lot of long term success to enjoy and you have a lot of long term success to look forward to. And on top of that, your path is a lot smoother. Your path is smooth. There's no real financial burdens. There's no real financial troubles. In fact, financially, things are actually looking really, really quite healthy for you at this time. And then on top of that, 
you've taken lessons from your family but family background your family line and you found a way to kind of tweak it so that you have success doing what they do now i'm going to be really really honest with you sag some of you may find that you're more successful at what you your family did than they are at what they did and i feel like because there are certain fundamental changes that you've made that you've opened yourself up to that's kind of elevated your chances of success in comparison to the people before you because you're more open to learning and you're more open to adapting your situation it's kind of made you in some ways like more primed for success than the people before you some of you might experience that especially those with moolah placements because again your sign is all about roots right your roots are strengthened you've been strengthening your roots through trying new methods and means of growing them so now you have you have a certain amount of labor that looks really really like the results of your labor they look incredibly strong right now because you found new ways of ensuring that what you grow has some sustainability and you also have a really good flair for timing as well because you know that there has to be a beginning root there has to be an end branch you know that so you have a, a keener understanding of that as well that's another thing that some of your elders didn't figure out is that everything has to come to an end but you have a plan in place where you've thought of the beginning you've thought of the middle you've thought of the end you've thought of what you're going to do when something ends so you have actually put in place a plan that ensures better success for yourself than your elders had for themselves because of that because you've looked at all the angles and you've looked at every single possible possibility well looked at every single possibility through what you're doing you've looked at it all and you've said to yourself okay this is what i need to do then because i've looked at all the angles and i've taken all the possibilities into account this is what i need to be doing okay so things are looking really really great for november for the sagittarians they're looking really really good success is looking very strong right now like the note said um don't be surprised if a lot of what you do professionally and especially when it comes to your own business interests if you're self-employed don't be surprised if you gain a lot more success than you normally do don't be surprised if that happens because again you put this in place like throughout the year throughout the year you've been putting this in place so don't be surprised if a lot of the moves that you make during November they turn out to be successful not on a surface level but on a longer term one I feel like some of you are destined for wealth again like Virgo Virgo is destined towards some form of ownership and I feel like it's the same case with you only you have an easier journey towards getting there financially things are looking really healthy and like I said before and you know you don't have to struggle so much there's not so much struggling going on so it's not like a a big time yay this is going really well yay like it's not like that but it is deeper and longer term than that it's it's really really good so it's this is a very productive and stable and really really profitable time for Sagittarians right now this is a really good month for you yeah so that was the Sagittarius is there anything else I can see for Sagittarius look forward not back well you don't need any help with that you're, you're not one for looking at the past so always look at what's ahead of you never look at what's behind you what's behind what's behind you is being taken care of by spirit and by the people in your life look forward keep your eyes on your journey I feel like that's it for Sagittarius. So that was for Mula, Parva Ashara, and Uttara Ashara. Mm. Bye bye.
cancer now. Okay. Let's see if I've got any I've got cancer. I've got five to do. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Cancer. So you're the seventh sign that I'm doing today. So this is for Ponavasu, Posha, and Ashlesha. Now let's see the cards we've got for you. We've got the Justice card. Interesting. We've got the Three of Cups. And we have got Ceres, Nate, Nurture. I was about to say nature for a second. Same difference, but okay. Um, given that Demeter is the goddess of the harvest. Nurture, nature. Same thing, but not really. But anyway. Your focus is on your 11th house. So right now, it's less about work and more about receiving the spoils of that work or deciding how to share the spoils of that work. It's also about your destiny. So there are themes around your larger destiny coming into play here for the month of November. Okay. So when it comes to, you know, waiting to see what the results of your work have been thus far, it feels like for you, Cancer, that relates to you more than anybody right now. It's it's the time where you are actually focusing on your how do I put this? You're focusing on what you're receiving and you're figuring out how to make the most of what you've received rather than focusing too much on the past and what you actually did that led up to this place. Okay. Now, what can I get for your notes? I've got being an advocate for someone, new relationship, divine timing, many weddings and celebrations, moving through turmoil, laziness, uh, laziness, sorry. I have brain fog, um, cancer. I'm going to be real with you. I have brain fogs because of um, certain things going on in my brain. When I'm ready, I will tell... I will tell everyone on this channel what's been happening, but until then, Cancer, I've got to, yeah, I've got to, I've got to be careful with this. So we've got, I'm going to read your notes again, being an advocate for someone, new relationship, divine timing, many weddings and celebrations, moving through turmoil, laziness, dropping the ball, nurture, contemplating marriage, copyright laws, patent, going solitary, taking an unpopular stand staying out of trouble meditation and going within like i said before you are more focused on what you've received from spirit and what you've received from karma and what you've received from your own work you're more concerned about that looking inward than looking back at the past what you actually did or looking outward towards how other people respond to it right now you're focused on what you've brought in and kind of enjoying it or working with it or seeing the deeper connections that you've made in relationships as well so you're more interested in looking for the inner quality of what you've brought into your life rather than actually doing anything outwardly at this point laziness and dropping the ball i don't see that for you instead i see that you're less outwardly productive you're more inwardly productive so that basically means that you're more passive than active and this is the thing about being passive is that passive people mistake passivity for lack of action and that's not what that is passivity is basically preparing your environment and your physical space to receive what you want to what you want to gain or what you want to achieve it's like putting yourself in a position to receive what you want so on top of looking at the deeper potential of what you've brought into your life you're using that deeper potential to passively bring in what it is you want more of okay so you're not being lazy you're not dropping a ball you're just being more introverted and passive and preparing your environment. The only thing that I would say is be careful not to shut yourself off too much this month because you still need the help of other people and you still need to engage with other people in order to make your dreams come true. 
you still need to do that in order to make your dreams come true so don't get it into your head that you need to just stay stay indoors or stay where you are in order to get what you need to get done there are you need to take more risks, cancer i'm not gonna lie to you you do need to take more risks i feel like i need to get more cards to clarify your situation too because we've got the justice card to talk about i feel like you don't have much to worry about there i feel like you are helping other people but you need to um think about how you can ex expand upon that um i'm gonna come back to this in part two but for now i'm gonna go peace and blessings take care and yeah see you guys later mm -hmm. bye bye